listening to this talk could save your life, your eternal life. I hope so. Did you know that everybody in your street and in your house past the age of accountability has committed the worst possible crime or sin? You say ridiculous. No one on my street or house has committed murder. Listen, dear friends. The first commandment is not, thou shalt not kill. It is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And we've all broken it. Jesus said the first and great commandment is to love God with all the heart, mind, soul and strength. We've all broken it. From our first days of accountability, We've all broken it. Almost everybody on earth for a long time lives in utter forgetfulness of God without a suspicion that they may be doing something wrong. They don't fear the judgment. They never hurt anybody. But my dear friends, for the whole life, most people have been guilty of robbing God with contemptuous ignoring of his claims upon us. Listen, in him we live, move and have our being. Every breath is his gift. May I remind you that the good book given to save us says, it's appointed once to die, but after this, the judgment. Many things we don't like to think about. Judgment day is one of those things. They say there are only two things you can, cannot avoid, death and taxes. Let me tell you, it's a lot easier to avoid taxes than to avoid death and judgment day. There are a thousand places in the Bible, approximately, that tell us of the coming judgment after death. Dear friends, I plead with you today, listen to what Scripture says. None of us are permanent. Life is so temporary, we could be dead tomorrow. Only because of the love of God are we alive today. You say, well, maybe there's no God. Well, that's one way out, but it won't work. You either have to believe in eternal nothing made everything, matter and mind. No sane person can believe that. Or you can believe that eternal matter made mind. But mind is the most ingenious thing in the universe. It has more points of communication than all the communicating objects of earth. Nothing so complicated as the brain. Chance can't even make a thimble, let alone make an elephant or make you. The other alternative is an eternal mind, an eternal intelligent personal spirit made us in his spiritual likeness. That's the only one that will hold up. May I remind you, we're all gamblers. Nothing worthwhile can be absolutely proved. You need an infinite number of observations, perfect measuring instruments and complete objectivity. We don't have any of these. But listen, listen carefully. When you gamble about God and you gamble there is a God, you have everything to win and nothing to lose. If you gamble there's no God, you have everything to lose and nothing to win. It's a tragic fact that on no point of morality is the human conscience 
so apathetic as its chief duty to respond to the love of God. Love brought Christ down from heaven to be hated and mocked and stripped and crucified. Love took him to the tree. He loves us. The Bible says, Here is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, gave his son as a saviour from our sins, a propitiation, a sacrifice. Here's the key, dear friends. You and I can't keep this first commandment. Admit it. We've never done so. We're not doing so. And we can't do so unless. Listen. We love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4.19 While we were yet sinners, he died for us. The exodus the deliverance of those feeble tribes from the mighty power of Egypt, the cleaving of the sea. All this was symbolic that God wants to deliver the suffering, those in pain, in sorrow, in guilt. God wants to give them an exodus from a life that's not satisfying. Take them through to a land of milk and honey, the heaven to come. Do you see it, friends? Though you and I do not experience regret or alarm because of our sins God is very patient with us but the only key to the problem the problem is we don't love him and we can't unless unless we accept his love for us one of the greatest verses in the Bible found in Luke 6 where it says God is kind to the evil and to the unthankful. Well, that's a perfect description of me. And yet he loves me. He loves you. And dear friend, for eternal life, you must respond. Jesus said, unless you repent, you shall perish. Repentance, faith and forgiveness and judgment day. These are the great realities of life. You know, the best preachers of this truth have not been men in the pulpit. They've been hymn writers. Can I remind you of one of the best? And can it be that I should gain an interest in my Saviour's blood? Died he for me who caused him pain, for me who him to death pursued? Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, didst die for me? Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night. Thine eye sent a freedom-giving ray. I awoke, the dungeon was filled with light. I arose, went forth and followed thee. No condemnation now I dread. Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him my living head and clothed in righteousness divine. Bold I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. One of the greatest hymn writers was Paul Gerhardt. May I share with you what I think was his greatest hymn. Listen very carefully. In some hymn books it's 146. Depends on which hymn book. Listen very carefully. Because only when we believe that God loves us can we love. Here's this towering accusation. Above all our sins of temper, our lies, our exaggerations, our gossiping, our covetousness, our impurity, above all these, is the towering accusation. We have not kept the first commandment. We've not made God first in our day, first in our ways, first in our heart, first in our mind. God is meant to be to us what the sun is in the solar system. 
That's the way it was for Paul Gerhardt. Listen very carefully. Jesus, thy boundless love to me, no thought can reach, no tongue declare. I knit my thankful heart to thee and reign without a rival there. Thine, holy thine I am, Lord, with thy love my heart in flame. O oh, grant that nothing in my soul may dwell but thy pure love alone. O oh, may thy love possess me whole, my joy, my treasure, my crown. All coldness from my heart remove. May every act, word, thought be love. O oh, love, how cheering is thy ray. All pain before thy presence flees. Care, anguish, sorrow melt away where'er thy healing beams arise. O Jesus, nothing may I see, nothing desire or seek but thee. And here's the last verse. In suffering, be thy love my peace. In weakness, be thy love my power. And when the storms of life shall cease, Jesus, in that important hour, in death, in life, be thou my guide and save thee, save me, for whom thou hast died. The hymn writers had it. You ask me, well, Des, do you love like Paul Gerhardt, Charles Wesley? Answer, no. Well, why not? Because I have a sinful nature, just like you. None of us ever reach our full ideals, but we are guilty if we don't strive with all our might every conscious hour to fulfill what is right and true and just and pure and acceptable to God. One of my favourite passages of scripture is Romans 7. Paul, 14 years after his conversion, in that part of Romans that deals with sanctification, says the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death. There's our problem, dear friends. We have a sinful nature. But if you trust in the perfect merits of Christ, if you trust in his atonement on Calvary, you are esteemed perfect. You are justified just as if I'd never sinned. That glorious gospel alone accepted and then God accepts us as though we'd kept his first commandment. God bless you.